There's been quite the change to the background recently, as you can clearly see. Unfortunately, I can't really say the same about my football club. Another season in League One came to a close on Sunday, a two-all draw away at Cheltenham Town, frustrating to lose uh, the lead of the game off very late on, when we were ahead, obviously. And, yeah, another disappointing, bitterly disappointing Extremely frustrating, annoying and lacklustre season has gone by, really. Some people will maybe look at the lead table and go, oh, 10th place, that's an improvement. You know, we're, we're starting to get somewhere. Nah, not for me. Not for me at all. I, I, I honestly, I don't think much has changed, to be honest. Uh, well, yes, we have improved our league position. Not a lot has changed and it's still unbelievably frustrating to watch us play football at the moment and something seriously has got to change because as I said we've been seeing more of the same the same mistakes the exact same mistakes as last season honestly I reckon I could re-upload the video that I made last season end of season review or rant should I say because it definitely was a rant after the final game of the season last year I honestly think I could do cardboard copy the same thing of that video genuinely because the same mistakes have been made. I said it at the end of the video. We cannot afford to have another season like last year, this year. And we've just seen more of the same. Because it's down to the same mistakes. Thomas Sangal couldn't help himself at the start of the season. And once again, opened his mouth and showed no action whatsoever to that talk. You know, he said the target was top two. He claimed that we would have the fourth biggest budget in the league, which was a slight decrease according to him because apparently we were the third biggest spenders last year, which, to be fair, we were. We did invest in the team last season. And, you know, Sangard said that we would have the fourth biggest budget in the league. Ben Garner was appointed. I will admit, going into the season, there was a lot of ambiguity with us because obviously it was a new era. Garner was a young and up-and-coming manager and still is. He's still... A young manager at 41, I think he is, or 42, I'm not entirely sure. Come off a very impressive spell at Swindon, considering their circumstances last season in League 2. His CV wasn't exactly huge, and it on and on that CV it had a very, very disastrous term at Bristol Rovers. But I was optimistic, quietly optimistic going into it, you know, because his time at Swindon was phenomenal, you know, considering what he did there and his attacking philosophy was very, very exciting, and it was... Something different and I think something that we needed and I was looking forward to seeing what Garner would do and what players he would bring in and if he would be able to instill that attacking philosophy into these players. And as we all know, he, he was sold a dream. He was absolutely sold a dream. Sangard wouldn't even spend a penny in the summer. A lot of players came in from League Two, three of which coming in from Garner's club Swindon, which was to be expected. You know, a manager, obviously, if he gets on with the players that he's had previously, obviously he's going to bring them here. You know, we get Owen O'Connell, we get Mandela Regbo, we get Joe Wallacott, Conor McGrandles from Lincoln, I felt was a good signing at the start of the season. Had a good spell at Lincoln, I felt was going to offer a lot to midfield. Stephen Sessegnon, impressed at Plymouth last season. Jack Payne, Good experienced midfielder, good experienced attacking midfielder, one that I felt we needed. Jez Raksaki, of course, we all know how good of a season he's gone on to have, considering it was his first professional uh, season, his first game in men's football. The boy has been a joy to watch this year. He's been absolutely incredible. But the, the lack of investment, the lack of investment and keeping a decent amount of players that last season were part of arguably the worst season this club has ever seen. 21 defeats in League One we had last year. The most amount of defeats we ever recorded in the third tier in a single season. That has to go down as the worst season. Quite a lot of the players going into the opening day against Accrington were there. You know, we, we, we kickstart the season. Ghana gets, I think, what is it, two wins in the first opening 12 games of the season. You know, not a lot of change. Not a lot of change at all. You know, there were some good results in there. Obviously, the win over Derby and the 5-1 thrashing of Plymouth Argyle, who bizarrely have gone on after that game to go on a ridiculous run, have a brilliant season and go on to win the league. Deservedly so as well, winning the League of Centurions. Congratulations to Plymouth. But 
you know, we had those two good results in there, but ultimately it was just a case of us being underprepared. You know, we didn't sign enough players. We didn't sign enough quality players into the team and our recruitment team once again showing how much of a shambles they are. Absolute shambles. You know, once again, like one of the biggest mistakes we made last year was that we were reacting way too late to sign players. And then we delve into the free agent market to sign nobodies, players that no one wants, you know, Papo Soiree and Stephen Henderson. And we make the same mistake this year. You know, three days before the summer transfer window shuts, Ben Garner is crying out for investment and crying out for players, saying, oh, yeah, we need more players, we need strength in the squad. We, you know, we didn't have another left back. We, did, we didn't have a left back, period. You know, we had Stephen Sessegnon, who was playing out of position or played, played very well in that position, but still, we didn't have a natural left back. We didn't have a striker and we didn't have a centre back. And our recruitment team realised three days too late, three days before the deadline, oh, no, we need to get these players. Macaulay Bon is the top of that list for a striker target. We failed to sign him. And then we go, all right, you know what? We don't need a striker. We'll just stick with Miles Lieburn and the injury-prone Chucks and EK and the inexperienced Daniel Carnu. And then we delve into the centre-back department to look for a free agent that no one wants, and we end up with Terrell Thomas. Underprepared and massively, massively lacking quality. And it showed, you know, two wins in the opening 12 games. Obviously, after that, we won, we won three games on the bounce. Exeter, Pompey and Shrewsbury, I want to say. Yeah, I think it was. Some good performances in there. And then that's followed by an eight-game winless run. And naturally, when results aren't going your way in this business, in this industry, the manager is the first one to blame. And I still think even now, even after he departed the club and we've obviously gone on a, a decent improvement since then under Dean Holden, but I still stand by it. I think Ben Garner was sacked at the wrong time. He should not have been sacked. I felt he did not get the time or the chance to rebuild this club, which his three-year contract that he signed when he joined us, when who we paid Swindon off for, by the way, and gave him a three-year contract, suggested that he would get that time. And he didn't. Would you say that Ben Garner's time at the club, you know, did he bring attacking football? Yeah, on occasion, but would you define Garner's time as playing attacking, attacking football? No, you'd have to say no. But you can only do so much with the hand that you're dealt and you can only do so much with the tools that you're given. And we have to say that Garner's tools were very worn down, shall we say, or just non-existent. They just weren't there. You know, you've got a recruitment team where the director of analysis is the owner's son, who is just as in, just as inexperienced in football as I am. The geezer knows absolutely nothing about this industry. And the same with his dad. Same with the owner. Steve Gallon's lost the plot. He's not brought a single decent talent to the club since Conor Gallagher and Josh Cullen. You could argue Raksaki, but I credit Raksaki to Ben Garner's connection to Palace. Ultimately, Garner was sold a dream coming to this club. He didn't receive the backing. And I'm not surprised it went tits up. And he gets the sack rather controversially over the phone. And on the day, Charlton celebrated their 30th anniversary back to the Valley, which shows the complete disrespect that Sandgard has to his staff. And it's not just Garner as well. We've done it to Johnny Jackson and he's done it to other members of staff over the years with the bullying accusations and making staff redundant. Disgraceful. And that was the final nail in the coffin for Sandgard as well at that point. That sold it for me and it sold it for everyone. The guy has got to leave the club and I stand by that now. Garner obviously has gone on to become the Colchester manager. I wish him the best there. Hopefully he can turn their fortunes around. They've been in the bottom end of the table in League 2 for a few seasons now. So they've got to try and get out of that. Hopefully Garner's the one to do that for them. Obviously, Dean Holden is brought in to replace uh, Garner. Obviously to facilitate the Charlie Meffin takeover, which is still rumbling on now. And Yeah, but, Gar but we have to say Holden, I think Charlton fans took to him fairly quickly. And I think we liked what, he, what we saw. Obviously, it wasn't exactly... An inspiring start. Obviously, it was very clear that a lot of work needed to be done, but we did see improvement. You know, he, he established a no dickheads policy. You know, players with an attitude were shipped off. You know, he brought, he managed to get the best out of a fair few players that I thought were struggling. You know, the likes of Scott Fraser and players like that. Obviously, Raksaki and Lieber and I think Sean under Holden and quite a few more players as well managed to pick up their act. January rolled around. And to be honest with you, I think the team came out worse after January than what it looked like. You know, we sell our best centre-back, Owen O'Connell, to Wrexham, who bizarrely is getting no games. I mean, he got obviously got injured. But the fact that he was not getting picked over Ryan Innes 
was absolutely disgraceful. I mean, the fact that Lucas Ness, a player that has never played for the senior team before, who was on loan at Torquay in October, can just come back, walk into the starting eleven, and I would go as far as saying, along with O'Connell, our best centre-back this season, is ridiculous to me. But like I said, January had very little effect on the team because we have to say, I think all five of the players that we signed struggled to make an impact and left something to be desired. Macaulay Bond, disgraced to this club. He has absolutely disgraced this club with his appalling attitude, shocking performances on the pitch and his blatant disrespect for the club. I was one of the many few who actually liked him in his first stint for the club when Lyle Taylor got that injury. Bond stepped up, he got the goals, I thought he performed well. Obviously, his head was turned by the QPR move. That's naturally, that comes naturally, you know. That's going to come naturally when you get a big move. But the blatant disrespect that he's shown for the club since then is, is it speaks volumes, really. And the fact that he was told to not bother coming to training and was left out of the squad um, against Cheltenham Town following his social media antics, again, speaks volumes. And I hope to never see him in a Cheltenham shirt again. Who else did we sign in January? I can't even remember. Todd Kane, he played what? Pff, fucking 50 minutes of football for us this season. Yeah, waste. Injury prone player. Matt Penny played what? Three times. Again, left something massively to be desired. It was absolutely shocking. Gavin Kilkenny is supposed to be Bournemouth's next big thing. Don't get me wrong. I had a couple of decent performances, but again, struggled to get into a struggling mid-table league one side. And then Michael Hector, who, yes, was the best performing of the five, but you guys know full well my opinion of Hector. I still don't think he was as good as people make him out to be. I'm sorry, but I just don't think he's been that good. Would still keep him, obviously, going into next season, but I don't think he's been as good as people think. Certainly don't think he's been the best centre-back since Patrick Bauer, like some people have suggested. It, it, it's been a mess, people. It's been a mess, but there have been, I think, some positives, and Dean Holden is one of them. I think, like I said, he's been able to get the best out of certain players, and ultimately... You know, we have to say he got us from what eight. We were eighteenth place at the halfway point of the season. That that weren't a joke. It felt like a dream or a sick joke. It weren't halfway point of the season. We were eighteenth, battling relegation, and the fact that he's got us the tenth is pretty impressive with the hand that he's been dealt with. And you know, I don't think I was exactly inspired at the time when he did come in. Obviously, he was brought in on a short term contract to facilitate the Charlie Meffin to facilitate the Charlie Meffin takeover, which of course collapsed, but. I, I think he's done very well. I think he has done very, very well. There are some things to question, like obviously the substitutions and certain team selections, but I know there are some people amongst the fan base that don't rate Holden and they don't think he's the man to lead him forward. I've said it a couple of times now. The, the, the biggest problem with this club is not the manager. It, it's past that point now. We can't keep sacking managers and keep expecting to get results because ultimately Holden has not been given the chance. Garner wasn't given the chance. Argu arguably, Johnny Jackson wasn't given the chance as much as I think he is a bit of an inept manager now, especially considering his time at AFC Wimbledon, what a disaster that's been. But managers are not getting the chance under the current regime. And thankfully, Holden has been given a three-year deal and hopefully he's going to get that chance. But as we know, with the current regime and the current model in place and with the with Sangard looking to find a way out, he's not going to invest in the club in the summer. Why would he when he's going to be covering the losses if a takeover falls through? So there's a lot of work to be done. But we've got to get behind Holden, ultimately. We've got to get behind him. I think the fact that he's got us two tenth place, considering the team that we have, is impressive. And I will give plaudits to that. But it's clear a lot of work needs to be done. Because realistically, tenth place for this club, 15 points, 15 off of the top six, is unacceptable. It is completely unacceptable. It speaks volumes because the team's in the top six and arguably the teams above that as well in the seventh, eighth and ninth or below that, sorry, should I say above us is what I meant to say. It speaks volumes because they are well clear of us. We are so far behind that, it's ridiculous. You know, we've got, what, 13 players set to leave the club in the summer. I'd keep only three of them. Try to sign a fourth if we can get Sessignon back. Like, we need a hard, hard reset. But that's what we've been doing for years and years and years. The squad looks... Like unrecognisable per season, except for the past two seasons, because we've kept the core of players that have failed us for year as for, for season after season. Some of them have got a stinking attitude, like the likes of Macaulay Bond and Alex Gilby. Inconsistency has cost us massively this season. We've got the same amount of defeats as we have wins, 16, 14 draws. 
scored a lot of goals. Now, what are, I think we were the sixth highest scoring team in the league, but considerably the worst defensive team in the top half of the table. It's that inconsistency. The prime example of it. How do you beat Shrewsbury Town 6-0 at home, thrash them to pieces, and then a fortnight later lose 6-0 to Ipswich? Don't get me wrong, Ipswich are a fantastic side, and deservedly so have gone up. But you, how, how do you do that? How? Like, that just shows our inconsistency. We can't string results together. You know, we win one game and we lose one. You know, we the fact that the players, you know, try to say, oh, yeah, we need to bounce back. And then they bounce back and they cup their ears to the fans and they pick themselves up on social media. The next game, they go and lose to Malcolm. Like, do, do you know what I mean? It's just that that needs to stop. And unfortunately, I think under the current regime, I don't think there's going to be much change. Because like I said, Soundguard very clearly is looking for a way out. In my opinion, I think he's looking for the highest bidder to try and compensate for the losses that he's had for this club because he's lost a lot of money while owning, while owning this club. Much of that, I'd say, is his own fault because he's just been too stubborn. He's let his ego get in the way. He's let his stubbornness get in the way. And he's realised his mistakes far too late. You know, with the whole Charlie Meffin situation, don't get me wrong, I'm very glad he's turned them away because I don't want Charlie Meffin anywhere near this club. The Mark Spiegel situation, I don't really know what's going on with that. Apparently, he was supposed to get a deal done, what was it, a couple of weeks ago, Friday, and then it fell or hit a roadblock, and apparently there's rumours suggesting it's fell through. Allegedly, the deals are still carrying on, and then there's a couple more groups interested. I think there's a, the Turkish lot are back in. There's another American consortium, and then you've got our CEO, Peter Story, you know, trying to big up next season, saying, oh, we've got an increased budget for next season. Do we hell have an increased budget next season? No chance. Now, I'm just sick and tired of this ownership just bigging it, bigging it up and showing no action whatsoever. How are you going to sit there and say we've got the biggest, we've got, a, well, not the bit, I was about to say we've got the biggest budget in the league, no chance. We've got an increased budget for next season. You cannot tell me that we will have an increased budget because everything that you've said has not been acted on. It's as simple as that. And not, not, this isn't me having a dig at Peter Story, but obviously he's employed by Sangard and he's, adapting what Sangard has done throughout his time at the club. Sangard has been all act, all talk, no action. Simple as that. And he's realised his mistakes way too late. You know, bringing in a CEO, bringing in other, you know, members on the board, like the likes of Andy Scott. And to be fair, they weren't even, he didn't even bring them in. You know, Charlie Meffin brought them in to facilitate the takeover. And what a fantastic job they did, by the way. Andy Scott coming in to help the recruitment team out. And you bring five players to the club who've had very little effect on the squad whatsoever. Of course, not spending a penny. The only penny we did spend was the left back from Ipswich, who allegedly was the best player Motherwell had, which speaks volumes, to be fair. Coming down from the SPL to League One, and you get a centre back playing in his position, a right back as well with Sessignon. Sessignon obviously played very well, but. <sighs> yeah, I'm not as optimistic as many people probably would be going into next season. I know a lot of people saying, oh, you know what, if we get the academy players in and we keep our best players, I reckon, you know, we've got a fighting chance of top six next season. <sighs> a lot of work needs to be done. I mean, for starters, our player of the season, Raksaki, who has been an absolute joy to watch, regardless of him being Palace, he's been absolutely exceptional this season. He's he's leaving. That's 15 goals from the squad already. If Miles Lieburn goes, that's another 12. You know, we've got other key players as well. We've got Blackett Taylor, we've got Dobson. As much as I've slated Fraser this season, he's he's again, he's also been impressive this year. Sessegnon leaving. Hector, who obviously on paper is a fantastic is a fantastic player and should be playing at League One level. Don't think he's been as good as people make him out to be, but you know, we're losing a lot of players. And the players that are staying, a couple of them are decent, but most of them are the same group of players that have let us down for two seasons. I think it's at this point now for next season where I think us fans are more interested as to who leaves the club rather than who comes in and rather than, than and rather than who we keep. Because we need to be brutal. As simple as that. We need to be brutal because these players have failed us for two seasons now. And we need to move past that. And we need to be brutal and we need to in we need to see some investment. Because it's been made very clear after this season, if you don't invest in the squad and you have a recruitment team that cannot do their job properly and go searching in Poundland for League 2 players, you know it ain't going to work. Full credit to Dean Holden, as I said, to get us into this position, but it's another unacceptable and frustrating season. And no wonder season ticket sales are plummeting. No wonder that the 
priority sale or the early bird pricing has been extended because the sales are so low. No wonder. But no wonder why fans are not willing to put a penny into the club and not go to see their team. I myself am seriously considering not renewing my season ticket, to be fair, as much as I took myself out of it. I probably will get one. But no wonder fans are turning their backs and not turn and not coming away because we're not inspired. We're not inspired by what we're seeing and we're not inspired by what we've been seeing for the past two years. And unfortunately, as much as people will be optimistic going into next season, I'm not. I'm optimistic with the manager, Dean Alden. I'm excited to see what he can do next year. But ultimately, the guy can only do so much under the current regime because right now, the takeover just needs to go through. At this point, honestly... It just needs to be done because we know full well Soundgarden is not going to fork money into the club for investment next season when he's going to be covering the losses if a takeover falls through. It just needs to happen and we need to be quick. We need to be aggressive. We need to be brutal in the transfer window. Let players go and we need to be acting quick to sign some free agents available. Because realistically, I think that's all we're going to be signing as well as loans. There's been some positives with this season. Raksaki, as I said, joy to watch. Miles Lieburn has been a star boy. Watching him break into the team and stepping in and stepping into his father's shoes has been fantastic. Dean Olden has been a huge positive. Manchester United away, one of the most unbelievable experiences of my life following this club. We've had a couple of good results in there as well. Doing the double over Pompey, smashing uh, Plymouth 5-1, thrashing Shrewsbury 6-0. But there's also been some lows. Some very big lows and lows that have been repeated, which we couldn't do after last season that we have done. This is our fourth consecutive season in League One now that we're now heading into. We can't be putting up with this any longer. We cannot be stuck here any longer and it needs to change. Thomas Sangard has to go, as simple as that. He has to leave the club. He's got to go. His his stubbornness has completely ruined his legacy at this club. I will thank him for saving this club from administration when he does eventually go. That is obviously all I'll thank him for. But I feel like a lot of the fans don't like hearing me say that and don't like hearing that, that he saved this club. But the reality is he did. He did. And I will thank him for stepping in and giving it a go because unlike his predecessors, unlike ESI, unlike Roland, he's not a crook. He he is a genuine nice guy. I've 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 met him. I've had the privilege of meeting him. He comes across as a nice guy who is passionate. You know, you can see that he is passionate. He does care. He does want what's best for this club, in my opinion, anyway, from what I can judge from his personality. He, he's not a bad person. He's just got his judgment horribly wrong. He's got it horribly wrong. And he's realised too late his mistakes. And ultimately now, as I say, in this position, he's just looking to find a way out. He's not looking to retain a stake. He just wants to get out with the highest price he can and just get back to America. I will thank him for saving the club. And I'll thank him for Charlton TV as well. That's been a fantastic um, introduction to the club and a much needed introduction to the club as well it's been a very good introduction but sadly that's all I'll thank him for it's a shame that he will be remembered for an owner remembered as an owner that took this club backwards who was all mouth no trousers but sadly that's it and I'm afraid that's his own doing and right now he just needs to shut up shop leave the club pass it on to someone who hopefully has the club's best interest at heart and has the fans best interest at heart gives holding the back in and we go into next season, hopefully, as a competitive League One side. But at the moment, people, I can't say I'm that confident. I can't, under the current regime. I know some people are optimistic, but I like to think I'm a realist. And in my realistic mind, I don't think we'll be any different from next season. Possibly even worse. But let's see how it goes. It's going to be a very interesting few weeks. I suspect the retain list is going to come out very soon. Very interested to see who we keep and who is going to be moved on. And... Yeah, the summer preparations begin now before pre-season. We need to identify our targets and we need to bring in players that are going to want to fight and are going to want to be at this club. But ultimately, we've had another disastrous season, another bitterly disappointing season. 10th place, mid-table once again. 
fourth season in League One coming up. And hopefully, hopefully, I'm holding out all hope here that we can push on and we can get ourselves a good season under our belt. But like I said, I'm not holding out. Well, I'm not massively confident, but I can, there's a little part of me that's really hoping that we can. But in Dean Oldham, we trust, I suppose. Eh? So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, turn on post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video. What do you think of our season? Let me know in the comments below. I don't think you probably need to tell me. I think I probably know full well what you guys think. I do plan to get a lot more videos out. Obviously, we've got reacting to my League One predictions from the start of the season. We'll obviously be reacting to the retain list. The annual goal compilation will be coming out very soon. I'll probably do a tier list ranking uh, the Charlton squad. The League One transfer room roundup will be making its return. Obviously, I didn't do it in January, which I can only apologise for, but it will be coming back over the summer. And of course, Addicts Editions will be coming back and we'll be hopefully i can uh, as i'm saying this now hopefully we'll be getting more videos out for you guys over the summer because i will have a lot more time after this week because i've got some coursework to do and a few exams uh to prepare for um over the next few weeks but i will try my very best to get out as many videos for you guys because i have got a lot of ideas planned so stay tuned for that and i will see you all then for the next video this has been tyler ronitson have a nice day i'll see you all then take it easy stay safe and i'll see you all later <sighs> Another mid-table season in League One. And let's just hope the next season's different. Take it easy.